Okay, continuing on with our fault code videos. The fault code we're going to be looking at now is the F76 fault code relating to Valent Ecotech boilers. Now this particular fault code is quite catastrophic and I don't particularly like making this video because it's only going to be filled up with bad news unfortunately. But um, it has to be done. But there you go. This is a main heat exchanger out of a Valent Ecotech boiler. It consists of a plastic shroud with a, a multiple coiled heat exchanger inside of stainless steel tubing and then we have an air gap between the tubing and the plastic shroud outside. This is a, a thermal link or what we would call years ago or what I would basically call an overheat thermostat or trip and that is situated or parked in the top of the heat exchanger in here like that. Well, Sort of like that, okay? And then the leads come down and they go down into the printed circuit board and that's what controls it. Now this continually monitors the external temperature or the surface temperature and the air temperature around the coils inside the heat exchanger. Now, if for whatever reason your boiler has got no water in it or for whatever reason it overheats, this particular component will fuse or it will blow and therefore you will not be able to reset the boiler and you will get the full code F76. Now this is quite catastrophic because the theory is, is that this particular th thermal fuse or link, if it does trip or blows, means that the integrity of the main heat exchanger is in serious doubt and that's because it's probably been damaged beyond uh, repair or you can't continue to use it. So. You think, okay, well, what do we do now? Well, the problem with that is that this is not a component or part number for uh, on the parts list for valent boilers. That means that you cannot buy one. Okay, you cannot get this part as an individual component. If you want one of these, you have to buy one of these, and these are unbelievably expensive, and you probably won't bother because it's just not worth the cost, it's cheaper to buy an ideal logic or an ideal independent boiler and just change the boiler and have done with it. So if you've got an F76 fault code you need to check or this will probably be the problem. Now it may be or it's worth getting it checked out by someone who knows what they're doing. Get them in to check that it isn't the actual linkage that's the problem or there's a wiring defect because you could be fault. This could be, uh, if you've got a break in the link in the wiring, it will give you an F76 fault code. It won't necessarily mean that the, faulty, the heat exchange is faulty, nor does it mean that the, th the fuse or the thermal link has tripped. So it may be something very simple. But if you have all that checked out, and this has actually gone, then you will need to buy a new main heat exchanger. Now, how do we prevent this happening? Well. Generally speaking, this only happens if the heat exchanger has not got enough water in it to cool it down or keep it at a low temperature. And this normally happens when you turn the boiler on. So, what do we do? Well, Valent have already pre-thought this out very cleverly. And what they've done is they've built in a test program into the boiler to ensure that the boiler doesn't come on until the heat exchanger is completely full up with water. Now, it is a critical test program. And every time you work on the boiler or empty the boiler, you must run the P0 test program before you fire the boiler up. And what that does is it purges the whole boiler and all the system and the radiators of air and makes sure everything's full up with water before it comes on and heats up this heat exchanger. Therefore preventing this overheating and blowing and then costing you hundreds of pounds. Now I cannot believe the amount of engineers and plumbers out there that don't even know what this is, they don't know what it does, and they don't even bother reading the book to find out what the P0 test program is. And when I work for Valent, on many occasions, brand new boilers have been completely wrecked because the plumbers have turned the boiler on before running the test program. So, just quickly, I might as well show you while we're here. This is how you run a P0 test program and every time you drain a boiler or empty the boiler of water or fill it back up again, you should run this test program. Now I'm going to turn the boiler off. Bink, there she goes. Now, I want to run the test program P0, so we're going to assume that say I've changed the diverter valve in the boiler, so I've turned the boiler off, drained it, put a new diverter in, 
turn the valves back on to fill it back up with water. I've topped the, balls, the water level back up with a filling loop or a filling mechanism. And now I want to turn the boiler back on. Well, before I turn it back on, I'm going to press and hold in the plus button on the display here. Then I will switch the power onto the boiler whilst holding in the plus button. The display will then flash up P.0. Now I, there are various or there are other test programs you can use, but P0 is the one that we're interested in because that's the purge program. If I then just push the I button, the boiler will now start the test program and I can go and have a cup of tea. Because that will run the domestic hot water circuit and the heating circuit for the main heat exchanger for a predetermined period of time it will continuously fluctuate or move the diverter valve from one position to the other position to ensure that the whole system, the boiler and the plate heat exchanger circuit has all been purged of air. And once that's completed, the P0 will stop flashing, it will revert back to normal display and you can then turn the boiler on and start using and burning gas. So there you go, S76 P0 test program. Very, very, very important unless you want to run the risk of blowing this every time you work on the boiler. So, hopefully, see you next time. Bye-bye.